Hi everyone, welcome to the second module, Problem Identification, of the CDOT Fiscal Year Grant Application Technical Assistance Modules. During the first module, we gave you some tips, uh, general grant writing tips, to help you mm -hmm. think through how to structure your application and how to uh, think about things like punctuation and capitalization as you're writing your application. Uh, one of the things that was recommended in there, if you haven't seen it, is that you really need to pay close attention to what the request for ap application says and what the funder is really looking to fund. So if you have seen that webinar and actually have read the application for this grant opportunity thoroughly, you'll see that the problem identification section is the most important section in this document. Um, and so we hope that the information in this webinar will help you think through the strategy behind what problems you identify in your county, how to do it, and then how to pull data from the problem identification report like you see here um, in order to make that happen. Okay, so to start this module, what we're going to do is just use a hypothetical county named Fake County, and we're going to pretend that we work for a motor vehicle safety coalition in Fake County and are thinking about applying for the CDOT um, 2015 funds that are available to support some of our program but we're not really sure exactly what direction to go so what we want you to assume as we kind of role play through the thought process of how to decide um, you know what focus area to really zero in on for your application and how to use the problem identification report that accompanied the application to look at your data and really make some good decisions about what target populations and ge geographic locations that you really should be focusing on for your project. Um, so we're going to assume that you all have read through the CDOT request for application and we're also going to assume that you, um, that these two players, um, so uh, Jan and Lindsay, have listened to the problem identification report um, overview as well as CDOT's presentation for the overview of the request for application. So we're going to just start talking about that. So Jan, did you listen to the CDOT problem identification report? I did. I, um, I was surprised that there were more fatalities in 2012 and that it was our first year of an increase as a state. Me too. I, you know, I really um, was trying to read between the lines and hear what does CDOT really want from this application. It seems like they've made a lot of changes this time, so I just was trying to think and read between the lines a little bit. You know, what what would really be a good thing to focus on? Currently, we don't have any funding for our motor vehicle safety activities, and I really want to be competitive for this grant. Right. They were mentioning that their three main focus areas are unrestrained fatalities and impaired driving fatalities and speeding related fatalities. Do we think we have something in there? I mean, we probably do. I think maybe we should look at our section of the problem identification report for Fake County and see what the data says and maybe it can help us make those decisions. I did hear on that overview of the RFA webinar that they're really putting a big emphasis on this problem identification section and in fact if we're not able to make a strong enough case for um, our project addressing an identified need in our area that CDOT's not even going to send it to the grant reviewers to actually be scored so I really want to make sure that we're thoughtful about this process. Okay, so Jan, I think the first thing that we should do, even maybe before we look at our section of the problem ID, is let's look at the instructions for the problem identification section and make sure that we're thinking through all of the possible things that we need to have in here. Um, so I've pulled it up here, and it looks like, um, first, even on the cover page, we have got to identify an emphasis area. Uh, so we have lots of options. It looks like this is pretty much the same as previous applications. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, mm -hmm. clearly, I mean, I know we have a lot of people that are really concerned about child pa passenger safety, and our law enforcement agency has been doing a lot of stuff with speed enforcement, but I'm just trying to think what would be the best thing for us to zero in on. Um, okay, so we'll have to think about that. Maybe the problem identification will help us identify that. So here's the instructions. Describe the problem within your chosen emphasis area to be addressed by your project by choosing current and relevant data. The 
identified problems must be related to one of the following CDOT performance measures. Okay, so it looks like we have to identify which of these performance measures um, we want to use. Um, okay, so then the data used to identify and support the problem can come from the problem identification report and or local data that you have access to. I actually do think we have a little local data that we can use, um, including data from previous projects. Uh, use data to the local target area or local area and target population the project intends to serve. Define your target population and describe how they are impacted by the problem. Okay, this includes magnitude and trend of the problem, hence showcasing the need for your program in this specific area. Okay, so let's look at the evaluation criteria just to make sure that we're capturing all the things that need to be in this section. So we need to clearly identify a problem and we can only have one emphasis area. We need to also identify the performance measures that the project will address, identify our target population, uh, identify a specific local geographic area, use multiple years of data if we can, make sure to reference our data sources, and then adequately establish the need. Okay, so I guess maybe one strategy that we learned from the previous webinar on grant writing tips is maybe we should just start a format with all of the the key titles and, and everything. And I know this application actually included a template down here somewhere. There it is. So maybe we'll just pull this into our own format and then just start an outline. Does that sound OK? Yeah, that sounds good. We could just make our own notes. OK. So if you watched the first grant writing module that kind of that gave you the overview of how to set up um, your narrative, you might have taken note to the fact that um, we suggested to read through the the criteria and to take notes in a document that is set up with the right font size and the right page margins um, so that you have all of your notes in one place and can then start to write your your grant. So when we looked through the problem identification section, we took note of a few areas that we specifically need to make sure we address. So within the problem identification portion, we need to pick our one emphasis area. We need to be able to know what performance measures we are targeting. We need to identify our target population, which also includes the geographic area of the project. And then we need to make note of key data about our target population in the geographic area. This data can come from the problem ID. Um, and we also have local data that we will be able to add in our narrative. And then finally, with all of that information, we need to summarize what our problem statement will be. So before we start filling in this narrative, we will take a look at the actual fake county page to identify what area we think our project will target. So now we are going to take a look at fake county's data. And the, um, the first thing I noticed when looking at table two is our total number of traffic fatalities between 2008 and 2012. In Fate County, these fatalities have actually decreased over the five-year time period from 44 in 2008 to 38 fatalities in 2012. This is a 13.6% decrease. So while Fate County has seen a decrease, when we look at the actual crude rate, we see that in Fate County, there have been 14.9 deaths per 100,000 people. And this is greater than the rate for Colorado as a whole, which is 9.4. So this tells me that even though we've seen a decrease, our actual, our crude rate is greater than the state. And so there's still room for improvement and work that can be done. So as we continue to look through the 10 performance measures, it seems as though Fake County has been improving in quite a few areas. And CDOT mentioned that they are particularly focused on speeding related fatalities, impaired driving fatalities, and unrestrained fatalities. 
And when I look at those performance measures for, K for Fake County, we seem to be improving in all of those areas. However, if we look at the motorcycle fatalities, unhelmeted fatalities, and drivers age 20 or younger in fatal crashes, all three of those areas have increased by 67% between 2008 and 2012. And so I think that maybe we want to focus on one of these three areas. At first glance, it seems as though the young drivers might be of particular interest because the crude rate is, is much greater than Colorado as a whole. Whereas in the motorcycle fatalities, the numbers are a little bit smaller. They've increased by only by one or two, and our county's rate is pretty similar to the state. So it seems as though we can make a bigger impact if we focus on the young drivers. But let's continue to look through the county sheet and see what other data we can find that might support this. So as we scroll to the next page of Fate County, uh, there's a blur blurb about young drivers and it, it just confirms what we already know, that between 2008 and 2012, the number of drivers 20 and under in fatal crashes increased by 67%. And then if we look over at figure two, we see that Fate County's fatality rate line is greater than Colorado. Um, so it seems as though they contribute to the problem more than maybe some other counties if Colorado's average as a whole is below theirs. So continuing down, we come to this table with the fatalities and hospitalizations by age distribution. And this table is of interest. Here we can see that the 16 to 20 year olds had 14 total fatalities. This is over a three year time span, 2010 to 2012. You know, this table could be a little bit confusing because the age groups are all different. We, the first age group is, is five years and then there's three years together. And some of the age groups like the 35 to 54 year olds is 20 years. Um, of people grouped together. So how do we really tell? Because at first glance, 43 seems like a bigger problem than 14. Um, and I think that one of the ideas with, these, with this county page is that at the very top, we were provided demographic data. And so here we can see the total population size for each of the age groups. And it seems like it might be a good idea to calculate rates so that we are normalizing the way we're looking at all of these age groups. So in case you forgot how to calculate rates, let me show you that. Okay, so if we look at this, um, these formulas, the very top one says that the rate equals the average number of events divided by the average population size. And since we're specifically talking about fatality, fatalities, we are calculating the fatality rate. And so this is the average number of deaths divided by the average population size. So in thinking about Fate County's table, uh, we mentioned that that table includes three years of data. The first thing we would want to do is figure out the average number of deaths for the 16 to 20 year olds over that three year time period. So we are taking 14 deaths and dividing that by three because it's three years. And then we're dividing the average number of fatalities by the population size. Now you might have remembered that that population information is only for 2012. Since we are not publishing the data and we're really just using it as a way to guide ourselves in seeing what age group has the most burden, we think it's okay if you just use that, uh, that population size as an estimate. The other thing you could do is actually look up the 2010, 11, and 12 population size and average them yourself. But since it's just an estimate, we think this is okay. So after we divide the number of deaths by the population size, we multiply that by 100,000 so that we come up with the number of fatalities per 100,000 people. And for Fate County, 16 to 20 year olds, that turns out to be 21.32 fatalities. So I went ahead and calculated the fatality rate in this same 
manner for each of the age groups for the total fatalities, for the motorcyclist fatalities, and the number of hospitalizations. Turns out that the 16 to 20 year olds have the highest rate, 21.32 of total fatalities, and the highest rate of hospitalizations at almost 122. So it seems that maybe this group is a good target area. Do we think that these teens are wearing seatbelts in their car? I mean, it says 80, our observational surveys, which we're lucky that we do have um, some seatbelt use survey from CSU uh, in here, but it says 83.3% seatbelt use, which is pretty low, I think. Um, although, I mean, it's a little higher than the overall seatbelt use for that. I mean, it'd be interesting to look at unrestrained fatalities for fake county, mm -hmm. but they didn't include that here. I wonder what the, the full report says about unrestrained fatalities in this age group. Right. I think that there's a table um, in the statewide perspective that we saw that looks at unrestrained fatalities by age group and, and also serious injuries. So when we went back to the statewide perspective, we, we looked at the unrestrained fatalities and serious injuries table it shows the number of unrestrained fatalities per age group. And then there's also a proportion. Um, it looks like they show us the number of unrestrained fatalities and the total number, number of motor vehicle occupant fatalities so that we know what proportion were unrestrained. For the 16 to 20 year olds in 2010 to 2012, there were 76 unrestrained fatalities out of 115. That's 66% or two thirds of the fatalities were unrestrained. And really when we look back to 2007 and to, the, to 2009, we didn't get better. It looks like we actually got worse in terms of the proportion of unrestrained fatalities. Previously it was 58% and now we increased to 66. Hmm. It's not specific to our county, but it seems like it's a problem for this age group. It also seems if we have 66% in, in that age group um, as a state as a whole, if we compare that to all ages, it looks like, you know, young people aged 16 to 20 are actually higher proportion than compared when compared to all age groups, right? Yeah, and that's what that's saying. Okay. Well, I wonder what some of the causes of the crashes are. That might be something to look into. I think that there's a graph in our county page that's talking about contributing factors yeah it looks like it looks like inexperience is actually one of our highest contributing factors to crashes hmm. so that might mean that if we have a high proportion of our fatalities that are in the 16 to 20 age group and we know that a lot of the the contributing factors are inexperienced that might mean that young people are causing a lot of these crashes, even though we don't have really specific data to talk about that. And it looks like distracted is another, is actually the leading causing, the leading contributing factor for Fate County. And maybe that is higher among teens. We don't really know, but, but we could still, we could still try to prevent it. Okay. Okay. Well, I think, I think we have some pretty good bullet points there. I, I'm wondering about our local data. So we've done, we have five high schools in Fake County, and I know that we've done some seatbelt observations um, at those counties. So we could go back and look at what our data said, uh, just our local data, even though we didn't publish it anywhere, and include that just to show some trends um, that we're seeing over time, if we can. And then we also, um, since that age group 16 to 20 includes some people that might be in college, we actually have a community college in Fate County, so we, we did do one observational survey there. Um, so we could pull some of that data and just see how that supports it. Yeah, I think that would be great to include. So it sounds like we're pretty settled on 16 to 20 year olds. So I think we're ready to um, take a stab at filling out kind of our outline. We'll obviously have to go through here and write it in complete sentences and paragraphs and make sure that we don't exceed um, as a total eight single side pages, but it was nice that they gave us a couple extra pages this time. Uh, so let's just confirm some of the things that we've talked about. So it sounds like our emphasis area is going to focus on young drivers, right? Yes. 
Um, and that actually maps nicely to this performance measure, reduce the number of drivers age 20 or younger involved in fatal crashes. So that's good. Um, but looking at what might be lit related to that, if we're successful in reducing drivers fatalities among this age group, it looks like we also will reduce traffic fatalities overall and hopefully serious injuries in traffic crashes as well. And then I know this was a big focus for CDOT, but they really are trying to impact fatalities, particularly unrestrained passenger fatalities. Um, so I think that we would also perhaps in, um, be able to come up with a project that would address that performance measure as well. We can always go back after we fully flesh out the project and refine these performance measures if we need to, but I think for an outline it's pretty good. Yeah, I think Do it's a good start. Okay. Um, so then, oops, I have a little mistake. 20, 16 to 20 year old drivers. So we'll, I think that's our target population, right? Yeah. And is it just drivers or do we want to say passengers too? Oh, I like that. Let's, let's change that to passengers too. And passengers too. <laughs> uh, just because, you know, that also because of this unrestrained passenger piece here. So that's good. Okay, I like that. So then geographic area, I think we could do a countywide project since we already have some inns at all the schools and um, pretty good county level work. I think we could focus there. Okay. So I tried to jot down while you were talking, Jan, some of the key data points from the problem ID. I thought if we just put them down here on paper, then we can think about how to interweave them in and and uh, we won't really present them in bullet points like this, but it'll help us maybe think through um, how, what data we definitely want to include in our paragraphs at some point. Can you walk us through just a little bit about make sure I have these right? Sure. Um, from Fate County's page, we noticed that the overall fatalities decreased, but that the five-year crude rate is still higher than Colorado's. The drivers age 20 or younger involved in fatal crashes increased 67 percent between 2008 and 2012 and again fate county has a higher crude rate than colorado as a whole the rate of total fatalities in, in fate county is greatest for 16 to 20 year olds as well as for the hospitalizations inexperience was one of the leading human contributing factors for all crashes crashes in fate county which means that young drivers are responsible for causing many crashes. Distracted driving is also a leading human contributing factor for all crashes. And then although unbelted fatalities among 16 to 20 year olds is not available for Fate County, 66% of 16 to 20 year olds that died in motor vehicle crashes were unrestrained in Colorado. That's an increase in the proportion from 2007 to 2009 from 58%. And this age group also has a greater number of unrestrained fatalities than the state as a whole. Great. And then I'll just, this is the local data that I was able to dig up. So for the last three years, um, the Fate County Teen Driving Coalition conducted observational seatbelt surveys and distracted driving surveys. I couldn't find the distracted driving survey data, but if we decide to focus our project on that, then I'll need to go back and find that. Um, but we, we did survey all five, or have observational surveys at all five Fate County high schools and one community college that's in our area. So what we observed, um, if we look at the, the percent um, buckled up across all those five high schools, that it was only about 70%, which is interesting since, you know, the observed teen seatbelt rate from the problem identification was 83.3. .3. So I don't know what that means. Maybe it's just where we're doing it or, uh, you know, we'll have to think about maybe methodology or it could mean that our methodologies actually better because we definitely know what age group the kids are around that area and those other surveys are kind of hard. I think that um, the CSU observational survey is also done right after that click it or ticket enforcement period so maybe their rates are slightly higher than um, when we observed them in November. Oh true. Huh. Well, so I think that's something interesting anyway, so we definitely want to include that. And then at the community college, it was actually lower, 65%. So um, 
that's what we know. There's also a little disparity. Um, we, our county participates in the Healthy Kids Colorado survey or many of the schools in our county. Sometimes people call that the Youth Risk Behavior Survey. It's from the Centers for Disease Control. So our health department, you know, helped us look up this data and uh, there's a question on there about asking teens how often they wear their seatbelt. Uh, and it's just self-report kind of what they say. And what our data for our county showed is 80% of teens report that they always wear their seatbelt. So that's kind of interesting since that differs also from what we see in the um, our own observational surveys, but it is much closer to what the CSU survey said. So hard to tease out, but I think we could include that somewhere in there. And then uh, just to kind of close, I mean, I think this is sort of our main point and we'll need to fine tune how we write this and package this in a, in a narrative description. But in terms of our outline, I just captured that, you know, there's a disproportionate number of youth killed or hospitalized in motor vehicle crashes in Fate County. And the number of drivers age 20 or younger involved mm -hmm. in fatal crashes has increased between 2008 and 2012. I think that's kind of our main point. So we'll have to figure that out. And then I'm already seeing how oh, I had a mistake in here um, for that. So I think that's something to start on. Maybe next we should look at the project rationale and the guidance there and then think a little bit about how we can look at the countermeasures that work document oh, and right. come up with a project uh, and then revisit the section to make sure that we have all the data that we can um, to support the project that we're going for. So that concludes our webinar for this uh, portion. Please stay tuned for um, webinar three where we will talk about project rationale and how to choose your um, evidence-based programming that you will be using to propose in your projects.